Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to this uh, session on neoplasia. Um, this is the seventh uh, lecture and I will be talking about tumor immunity and genomic instability in cancer. Now, we have already talked about the hallmarks of cancer, how these various um, characteristics of cancer cells sort of define cancer, uh, most important being the self-sufficient growth signaling the insensitivity to growth inhibitory signals, the tumor suppressor genes and, uh, uh, and how viral oncogenesis is dependent on these uh, genes. And um, we have also talked about invasion and metastasis, one of the most important hallmarks of cancer. Uh, we have talked about uh, sustained angiogenesis and uh, today I will be talking about um, um, how, you know, uh, uh, immunity plays a role in cancer, how cancer cells avoid immune destruction and also I will be talking about how geno genomic instability is a key hallmark of cancer. Now, immune surveillance and how tumor cells evade this immune surveillance has been a very, very important uh, topic in cancer biology. And it was Paul Ehrlich who first recognized that tumor cells can be destroyed by immune cells. Now, if you see carcinogenesis or the growth of a tumor or sort of a foreign kind of, um, uh, pro foreign kind of process that is occurring within the human body, one wonders why the immune cells do not take care of these uh, proliferating tumor cells. We now know that immunity does play a very important role in preventing many cancers and that cancer somehow has a way of evading this immune surveillance and overgrowing this immune surveillance to become uh, cancer. Now, what do we have, how, what evidence do we have to say that immune surveillance does work in cancer? We know that there are tumor specific T cells and antibodies in patients who have cancer, these have been identified. And we also can see in the morphology of cancer that there are quite a number of immune cells that infiltrate the cancer. I will show you a picture uh, where there are so many lymphocytes within the cancer uh, cells which gives a clue that there must be some kind of an immune response that is happening within this uh, uh, these cancer cancerous tissues. And we also know that more the number of immune cells, more the number of lymphocytes, it has a bearing on the outcome, which means these patients who produce a good immune response have a more favorable uh, outcome than patients who do not. And we also know that cancer is very common in immunodeficient patients. For example, in patients suffering from uh, HIV, we know many cancers are common. So, that also gives evidence that immunity plays a role in cancer. And lastly, the holy grail of all <coughs> therapies, this is the immunotherapy that has emerged in many cancers and it has shown dramatic success um, in, uh, in even curing some advanced uh, cancers. So, these are all evidences to show that immune surveillance does play a very important role in cancer. Now, this is just an example to show you um, a, a tumor that commonly occurs in the testis, a germ cell tumor called uh, seminoma. On the left, you see normal testicular tissue. On the right, you see the cancerous cells, the large cells in nests with large nuclei and surrounding them, you see a sea of lymphocytes, the smaller blue dots that you are seeing and this is uh, the immune response of the body to the tumor cells. So, it is, these are all the T 
T cells, the T lymphocytes that are present within the tumor as a response to the tumor. Sometimes these uh, lymphocytes are so many that you can hardly see the cancerous cells. And um, understand, I mean, um, um, uh, importantly, seminoma is a tumor that can be treated and has a favorably good prognosis. Now, what are these tumor antigens? We know that cancer cells uh, acquire in them many genetic alterations and there are many driver mutations in oncogenes and tumor suppressor genes that accumulate within cancer cells. And now these produce the new antigens of the tumor cells. So, these uh, are some of the sources of the antigens. Sometimes normal proteins can also become antigenic in tumors. That is because uh, in a tumor, these antigens are produced in increased numbers. Examples being tyrosinase in melanomas, cancer testis antigens in uh, um, uh, testicular tumors. These are normal proteins which are produced in large numbers in a, cancers, in a cancerous tumor. Now, what are the effective immune responses that um, these tumor antigens evoke? Now, to illustrate this, I would, uh, I will show you a small, I will draw and show you a small diagram. What happens uh, when the, these tumor cells release the antigens, how they are acquired by the dendritic cells and how the dendritic cells carry these antigens uh, with the help of MHC class 1 molecules to the regional lymph nodes and cause proliferation of CD8 positive T cells, which are cytotoxic T cells and how these cytotoxic T cells go back to the tumor and attack the tumorous cells. Now, if you think um, this is a tumor in the breast, let us assume these are the cancerous cells that are in the breast and they, they then release antigens. that are recognized by dendritic cells. Now, these dendritic cells are very special cells. They are antigen presenting cells present throughout the body. They have highly specialized uh, functions and these cells accumulate these antigens or in the, um, with the help of MHC class 1, they recognize and internalize these antigens and take them to the regional lymph nodes, this is a lymph node, take them to the regional lymph nodes where it causes proliferation of cytotoxic T cells which, which recognize these antigens specifically. So, they are highly specific to these antigens. These are cytotoxic T cells with the antibodies or the CTLs which are produced and proliferate in response to these antigens. And these CTLs then go back to the tumor and attack the tumor cells. So, this is a very highly specialized mechanism involving uh, cytotoxic T cells and um, they go back to the tumor, proliferate, differentiate and attack the tumor cells. Now, when this kind of a mechanism is present, a highly specific mechanism, how do cancers evade this mechanism? Now, there are many ways in which cancers overcome these uh, immune mechanisms. One is by selective outgrowth of antigen negative variants. Now, we know that cancers continuously evolve and uh, as they evolve, subclones are formed which are slightly different from the original cells which are more resistant to all these cancer, um, uh, uh, the immune responses that are mounted against cancer. So, they uh, selectively they form antigen negative variants or they may lose or reduce the expression of histocompatibility molecules. So, that these antigens are not effectively presented to dendritic cells or there may be factors that are uh, secreted such as TGF beta and PD1 ligands 
This has emerged as a very important uh, pathway as an immune checkpoint in cancerous cells. This is a programmed cell death uh, 1 ligand and PD-1 receptors. PD-L1 expressed on tumor cells engage with uh, PD-1 on cytotoxic T cells and they block them. Now, the PD-1 is expressed on the CTLs which I showed you and the PD-L1 is expressed on the tumor cells. Normally, in normal cells, the PD-1 and PD-L1 are present so that the normal cells do not become antigenic to our own immune system. Otherwise, you would have the immune cells destroying all the antigens of the normal tissues also. So, this is in, in, in fact a sort of protective mechanism so that there is no autoimmune destruction of our own cells. Now, in cancers, the PD-1 and PD-L1 become over active so that the, the cancer cells are prevented from being destroyed by the CTLs. So, this is an important mechanism that ha happens in cancer. So, a protective mechanism that has evolved within the human body is exploited by the tumor cells. Now, we have today many drugs which can act against these PD-1 and PD-L1 receptors. So, that has become a very important therapeutic target in cancers. Now, the, the, as I said, the checkpoint blockade therapies have resulted in response rates of 10 to 30 percent in many cancers. So, that was about uh, tumor uh, immunity and uh, Im, uh, immune surveillance in cancer cells. We now move on to another very important aspect, a very important hallmark of uh, cancer which is genomic instability. As we know, uh, tumor cells are rapidly dividing, which is why uh, they, they do not have a very stable genome. And uh, DNA re repair mechanisms maintain the integrity of the genome. The cells in our body are continuously dividing, the DNA is being continuously replicated and there are bound to be errors when this uh, replication of the DNA occurs. Now, we in the human body has many mechanisms by which these DNA uh, errors are rep repaired and uh, individuals who are born with defective DNA repair mechanisms are at increased risk for developing cancers. And these um, repairs can be of three types, mismatch repair, nucleotide excision repair and recombination repair. There could be defects in either of uh, any of these three mechanisms and I will give you examples for each of them. The first is the DNA mismatch repair genes. Uh, there are individuals who develop certain kinds of uh, colonic cancers on the right, uh, uh, ascend, as, uh, right side of the colon, uh, cancers of the cecum and proximal colon. And these are known as, uh, these individuals have the syndrome known as hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer or HNPCC. Now, a characteristic finding in these uh, patients is they have defective DNA mismatch repair genes. And you have, if you analyze the tumor cells from these patients, there are what are known as microsatellite instability or MSI. Now, the DNA has tandem repeats of 5 to 6 nucleotides. Now, this is constant within a, a cell. Now, in patients who have defective mismatch repair genes, you find these uh, tandem repeats are of in unequal length throughout the genome. The second defect is defects in nucleotide excision repair and the uh, prototype of this uh, disease, uh, people who develop, uh, um, uh, who have defects in the this mechanism is known as xeroderma pigmentosum. Now, these individuals are at increased risk for developing skin cancers. The UV light of the sunlight cross causes cross-linking of DNA in these patients and these uh, are not repaired because they are defects in nucleotide excision repair. And so, these patients develop all kinds of skin cancers at a very early age, especially in the sun exposed areas multiple cancers develop in these patients. The third example is um, defects in DNA repair by homologous recombination. Now, this is another method in which DNA is repaired 
and some of the syndromes associated with this um, defect is Bloom syndrome, ataxia, telangiectasia and Fanconi's anemia. Now, these patients have hypersensitive uh, reactions to DNA damaging agents such as ionizing radiation. Now, you might have heard of BRCA1 and BRCA2, BRCA1 and BRCA2. These are implicated in the familial uh, breast cancer and these genes also uh, um, act at the level of homo the recombination repair. So, in these patients who inherit mutations of these genes have defective repair um, by homologous recombination and they tend to develop cancers of the breast, ovary, etcetera. So, in summary, today we learnt about two important hallmarks of cancer. One is uh, the immune evasion and the second is genomic instability. Now, anti-tumor activity is uh, immune activity is mediated by cytotoxic T lymphocytes and the tumors evade the immune system by several mechanisms as we uh, saw in this lecture. And immunotherapy for cancers, especially the anti-PDL1 uh, drugs is very, very promising. Now, genomic instability is also one of the hallmarks of cancer and people born with inherited defects of DNA repair mechanisms are at increased risk of developing cancers and some of the examples being HNPCC or hereditary non-polyposis cancer syndrome and xeroderma pigmentosum. Thank you.